2015, Parkland College and the East Central Research Foundation came together to look at the effect of row spacing and seeding rate on soybean varieties with differing statures. This was done by conducting a small plot trial designed to look at three factors. The first factor was soybean variety. Tilston was selected to represent an erect statured variety. Anola is semi-bushy and Gladstone is bushy. The hypothesis here is that the bushy statured varieties are better suited to wider row spacings as they fill in wide row spacings quicker than say an erect variety. The second factor targeted plant populations of 175,000 and 200,000 plants per acre. Past research would indicate that higher plant populations should be recommended when using narrow row spacings. The third factor examined were row spacings of 10 and 20 inches. So obviously, producers experimenting with soybeans are going to want to use the equipment that they have on hand. So for our producers, this means solid seeding soybeans at 10 inch row spacings. However, producers are eventually going to ask whether it's worth the investment to get a planter and move to wider row spacings. The potential advantage of wider row spacings are reduced seed costs and potentially less disease development. However, a disadvantage, particularly for our producers, might be that they're extending or prolonging maturity by moving to wider row spacing. Well, let's see how our trial went. The trial was seeded on May 21st, and we received a killing frost of minus 2 to minus 4 on May 30th. The soybeans emerged two days after the frost, so they were fine. But most of the other crops that I was growing were not so fine. I don't have a picture of canola, but let's just say between the frost and the flea beetles it was pretty ugly and I had to reseed most of my canola trials. The peas did fine. They got frosted off, but they were able to regrow from basal nodes. Similarly, the uh, faba beans also look pretty ugly, but they have basal nodes that are at ground level or slightly below ground level and they can send up new shoots from there. The cereals even got frosted off, but as you know, the growing point for cereals is below ground and they just kept growing after the frost. So you can see for a crop like soybeans, which has its growing point above ground, boy, it just missed a, it just dodged a bullet. The soybeans came up well, and the actual plant populations were reasonably close to the targeted plant populations. It's a little difficult to see in this picture. But Tilston, with its erect stature, was slower to fill in the rows than the bushy nature of Gladstone. So let's look at the yield data. These means are averaged over plant population because differences in plant population did not affect yield and there were no significant interactions. Tilston is an upright or erect variety and yielded just as well whether it was grown at 10 or 20 inch row spacings. North Star Genetics also reported seeing similar results for Tilston in other studies. Enola, which is a semi-bushy variety, performed significantly better at the wider 20-inch row spacing. Gladstone, which is bushy, also performed better at the 20-inch row spacing, but the yield improvement wasn't as great or significant. Of course, in this, this is only one study and a true planter was not used for the wider row spacings of this study. But I don't think I would be in a rush to get out there and buy a planter based on the results of this study. While bushier varieties performed better at wider row spacings, the yield was still comparable to Tilston grown at a narrow row spacing. Certainly more experimentation is needed, but I think it's possible to get comparable yields at narrow row spacings. I must say I like Tilston. We've grown it on the experimental farm for three years now. It's tall, it yields well at narrow row spacings, and it's early maturing. It's been the third year in a row that we've successfully grown short season varieties of, of soybeans at the Yorkton Research Farm, but it is nip and tuck to get them to mature on time. You really shouldn't be seeding soybeans early in the year into soils less than 10 degrees Celsius as they'll suffer from cold shock. So you're essentially looking to seed around May 2025. 
And you certainly don't want to seed much later than this because you won't accumulate enough crop heat units in order to mature the crop. If you look at our soybean variety by seeding date video from 2014, you'll see many of the varieties seeded late on June 3rd were affected by frost at, in the, at fall and had high levels of green seed. The same varieties seeded on May 22nd were fine. So we're, we have a very narrow window of growing soybeans or seeding soybeans and having drying capacity on hand would be good insurance to have. Soybeans will likely be the last thing that you will harvest on your farm. So there is a risk of growing soybeans in Yorkton, but as the climate continues to warm, we may see this crop becoming more common.